You are about to see a 20-minute debate on Menlo Park Measure L. Should the city adopt an ordinance that would limit retirement benefits for new City of Menlo Park employees, except sworn police officers, and restrict City Council from increasing benefits in the future without voter approval? This program is produced by the Mid-Peninsula Community Media Center. Hi, my name is Roy Sard Feely Sardinia. I'm co-chairman of the Citizens for Fair and Responsible Pension Reform. We're the group of citizens that gathered over 3,100 signatures to put Measure L on the November ballot in Menlo Park, California. 64 volunteers from all parts of Menlo Park in a bipartisan effort worked diligently over a short five-week period to gather this record number of signatures. We have support from all of the organizations, from six of the last 10 mayors, and from sitting council members. This is an important decision for Menlo Park, for the future of our citizens, and for the future of our city. Menlo Park, like many other cities in California, is experiencing financial difficulties due to the lowering of income tax and lowering the tax rate. In fact, our city ran a structural $3.2 million budget last year a deficit last year. As part of that, we saw that the escalating co cost of pensions was crippling the city as it's doing in every city, county, and state in the United States. It's difficult to read a newspaper today without find hearing a story about how pension costs and health care costs for city and municipal workers are crippling state economies. One of the long-term solutions to this is to lower the long-term costs to the cities of this benefit. We had four principal issues that we wanted to address as part of this. One was to raise the retirement age for city employees from 55 to 60. While the rest of America continues to have to retire at the age of 62 or 67, 62, 65 or 67, based on what year you were born, our city employees enjoyed a very young 55-year-old retirement age. In addition, we changed the multiplier that their retirement benefits are based on back to what they were prior to 2007, back to 2% per year of employment for the 30-year employment area. So that took them from an 81% of their pay pension back down to 60%. Many cities around California have had this formula for a long time and didn't do the middle-of-the-night pension increase in 2007 that Menlo Park did. The third feature of the measure for us was the no retroactive increases again. What happened in 2007 was a council voted to increase the pensions retroactively for all of the city employees. So when a city employee of 26 years was able to increase their pension payment by 35 percent for the entire time they were employed. And the final and most important feature of our measure and the one that had the highest amount of support by the citizens of Menlo Park was that in the future the citizens of Menlo Park will have to vote for any pension increases. This is a feature that has been done in many cities throughout California. San Francisco's had it in their charter since the um, late 1800s. It's been in front of their voters 50 times. City of Orange County, many cities throughout the United States require it. And we feel that the citizens of Menlo Park should have that right. In the middle of the night in 2007, the city council spent $6 million of our money without asking us our permission. They did so to increase the benefits to our city employees. If this had been a bond initiative for six, for six million dollars, they would have had to have asked our permission. In addition, this slight increase from two to 2.7%, a 35% increase in pension, actually cost the city 40% more in payments to CalPERS. A lifetime commitment of 30 years for a new employee happened on that evening. So when they make a commitment to increase pensions, they're not making a one-year commitment, which is what they said they did to offset some minor savings that year of $200,000. What they did was increase the lifetime cost to the city of Menlo Park. We feel that this is an important part of making Menlo Park viable financially in the long run. It doesn't solve some of the short-term problem. We understand that. The city should be negotiating harder with its employee unions to take care of that. But what this does is gives Menlo Park the basis for a long-term change. We're seeing these kinds of changes in other cities. The Menlo Park City Council, in fact, passed a 2 and 60 imposed contract on its employees. This is a temporary fix. On any given day, that same council could take that away. 
We want to make sure that the citizens have a voice in doing this. We have overwhelming support from all areas of the city and all political parties. This is an important decision for Menlo Park, and we feel that in the long run, Menlo Park will be a viable city because of our decision. Vote yes on Measure L. Measure L is not smart, it's not fair, and it's not necessary. We all know that cities are battling budget problems. We understand that we're all concerned about retirement security and pensions. That this initiative process is not the proper method for dealing with employee compensation. Residents will not have all the information needed to make an informed decision. Many voters, for example, have no idea that city employees pay no social secu or receive no social security. Menlo Park pays no social security for our city employees. It is the job of our city council and city staff to negotiate contracts with our city employees. Voters should not be placed in that role. It leads to gridlock. We need to stop governing from the ballot box. Also, the state legislator has decided that for general city or general law cities like Menlo Park, only a city council might make the final decision about employee compensation, including retirement benefits. This initiative is therefore illegal. There's already been one lawsuit. If this measure passes, we will certainly ha face another lawsuit. Legal costs will be borne by Menlo Park taxpayers. Menlo Park has excellent services, libraries, recreation facilities, youth and senior programs, great trees, and clean and safe parks and streets. These are why most of us choose to live in Menlo Park, and these are the things that we expect are threatened if talented employees go elsewhere. These changes to the city retirement security plan would make it one of the lowest in the state, particularly for a high un income city like Menlo Park. This initiative will make it harder to attract and retain quality staff. This measure is unfair because it treats people doing the same jobs differently when it comes to their compensation. It only affects future hires. Out of the top 100 highest paid employees in our city, under this measure, 47 would be exempt from, the, from, from this measure. They would not be affected at all. Those most affected are, hel are jobs held by women and minorities. Real reform has to address all city employees, not just jobs held mainly by women and minorities. Measure L will limit our city's flexibility to compete in an ever-changing economy and job market. It risks getting us disqualified from the state requirement system, CalPERS, and it will get us sued, leaving Menlo Park again paying for the legal bills. These consequences are unnecessary. Our city council has already passed the two at 60 reform that Measure L asks for, but the council's decision does not expose us to costly lawsuits, risk our participation in the CalPERS state retirement fund, ruin our ability to adapt and compete with other cities in hiring, or threaten the quality of our programs. Measure L is not financially or strategically smart. It is not fair or comprehensive. It is not necessary. We can accomplish the stated goals of pension reform without so many risks. In March, the City Council passed a 2% at 60 reform. So now all we get from L is risk and the inability to compete when things change. Palo Alto and San Carlos have both passed two at 60 reform this year, and should the economy shift, and with it the job market, they will be able to adapt. We won't. We have flexibility with police officers who aren't covered by Measure L. But what good is it going to do us in an emergency if we have to start with the second or third rate dispatcher? Measure L doesn't give us flexibility even with police positions, since only officers are excluded. I want us to continue to have the best dispatchers, the best gymnastics program, the best librarians, and the best childcare workers, the best tree canopy. Menlo Park has a triple A credit rating and the highest quality services around. Let's keep it that way. Measure L is not financially or strategically smart. It's not fair or comprehensive, and it is not necessary to achieve pension reform. Ballot box budgeting is not the right decision. Read your impartial analysis in your voter book. Don't be fooled by slogans or out of context sound bites. Please vote no for Measure L. We go now to the two rebuttal statements. The No on Measure L organization has characterized part of our initiative as not smart financially. And while we 
agree that the short-term benefits are not there. The long-term benefits certainly are. To characterize that it will put Menlo Park in a difficult position to hire people is to reject the thought that other cities, Redwood City, Belmont, San Carlos, South San Francisco, Palo Alto, all the communities around us who are also doing the exact same thing won't be able to hire as well. To characterize that you would hire a lesser employee when we have in the last position that was open for the city had tens of people apply for a single position is also unfair. The job market comes and goes. Pay can be adjusted. We find no need to continue to raise a pension system that costs significantly more than Social Security. They contend that, for example, the city employees don't pay Social Security, which would have cost the city of Menlo Park approximately 8% per year, which is the maximum Social Security amount. The average employee in Menlo Park earns approximately $68,500. So that $2,300 Social Security check they would receive costs the city about 8%. Instead, this year, our CalPERS contribution per employee is going to be 14.3%, and it's rising to excuse me, almost 20% in 2014. That premium is really the extra cost that the city bears by not being part of Social Security. The employees in the city of Menlo Park enjoy some of the most generous pension benefits in the state of California. They retire earlier than all of the citizens of Menlo Park who aren't public employees get to. They enjoy benefits in a defined pension program that exceed the pay of almost everybody who is going to receive Social Security. So that their initiative, their vote for, against L would really continue to put us in a high cost environment. The other in, part of the initiative is the cost to, to the city. Bill McClure, the city's attorney, has already indicated it's going to cost us approximately twenty-five dollars to $50,000 to defend this. They gave away $900,000 in cost to CalPERS the night they passed this in 2007. And it should be pointed out that the city's unions are the ones suing us. The very people who are our employees who bear the entire cost, of the, bear all the benefits to what Menlo Park spends are the people that are suing the city and residents and citizens of Menlo Park. The people we pay are suing us. Secondly, the part about this talented employment thing that rings very difficult for us is that as we continue to develop the city of Menlo Park, the job situation will change. As new employees join us, those benefits may accelerate quicker than the uh, opponents of L have indicated. And I really believe that in the long run, the citizens of Menlo Park deserve to have the best employees and have those employees earn a, uh, the continue to earn a wage, however, a fair and responsible financial outcome is needed for Menlo Park. We can't sustain these costs. In the last seven years, Menlo Park's operating budget has gone, the employee operating budget has gone from approximately 63% of the city's general fund to almost 71%, and it's increasing to 74%. If the 3.2 million structural deficit hadn't been used by doing a money transfer out of that general fund, the structural deficit in the employee cost would have exceeded almost 80%. It's unfair for a city to be able to provide that kind of cost to our employees if we really want to spend money on a gym, if we really want to spend money on that beautiful canopy. For all of the services that we want, there's more than an employee cost, and the city's cost of insurance and retirements are choking the amount of money that the city can truly spend at the benefit of its citizens. The no on Measure L people are continuing to use the fear that they won't be able to hire people. That's simply not an answer in this environment. Everybody knows that the, 20, that the more than 10% unemployment rate in California easily gives us a number of employees. In the future, those employees are hireable and will always have an employment base. We feel that in the long run, this is the right and responsible answer for our children. It's not a short-term answer. We're expecting the city council to do their job and to negotiate with, those, with, with the employee unions. But we want to be able to cap the cost to the citizens of Menlo Park. To insinuate that the citizens of Menlo Park aren't smart enough to understand the problem is to insult every single one of us who know and understand that the long-term cost that the city is in, uh, imposing affect us for 30 years. Vote yes on Measure L. If I was going to write an initiative, 
I would definitely call it citizens for the responsible form, reform of something because it sounds really reasonable. It sounds really responsible. It sounds fair. This initiative is not smart, it's not fair, and it's not going to be good for Menlo Park. The people who've written this initiative don't trust that elected officials, members of our community, will use good faith to negotiate good contracts. They don't trust that anybody but them knows how it should work. They're comfortable letting your eyes roll at the complexity of what it takes to manage a city budget. They expect you to be up to par on exactly how employee compensation negotiations go and make that decision here in this election for not just now, but for 10 years and for 20 years in advance. We all have busy lives. We all like to read and vote responsibly. But, but budgeting from the ballot box with less than all of the information is rarely a, a smart way to budget. It's gridlock. It's, it's not thoughtful. We've all said it before. Ballot box budgeting is irresponsible. We all know it's true. This isn't any different. I remind you, if I was going to write an initiative, I would call it Citizens for Fair and Spo Responsible Reform. Because anybody you walked up to in front of Draggers or Trader Joe's or Safeway would sign it. Because who's not for fair and responsible reform? There's a fair amount of inside politics. There's a fair amount of accusations. There's a fair amount of information that would make your head spin trying to keep up with. The bottom line is we can have pension reform that responsibly decides how much we pay in compensation and benefits to our employees without risking lawsuits, without being unfair, without targeting minority and women's positions. These things can be achieved, and maybe it won't be achieved fast enough or hard enough or angrily enough for the people in measure, on the Measure L campaign, but it will be done most responsibly if it is done by people with all of the information who are accountable to, accountable to us in elections. There are so many things that can be said that sound appalling and make you think, well, I'm not for that. Well, be careful because, as you know, people will say anything to try and make you think something's unreasonable. Things aren't usually quite so blatantly unreasonable. There's usually a better explanation if you have time to look into it. I would urge you, instead of thinking about all the politics and all the anger, to focus on the fact that this is not smart. It is not financially sound to get ourselves in the position to be sued. It is not... It's not fair to Menlo Park citizens to ask them to make this decision when it's the job of our city council and our employees to make this decision. I would urge you to vote no. Ballot box budgeting is a mistake. This is no exception. Thank you.